Okay, should we start? Thank you very much for coming. Uh, this talk is going to be about uh, Jigsaw in Debian. My name is Tom Marble. With me to present is Guillaume Mazoyer. And also with us uh, in the audience is Sylvester Littreux. And uh, we have all been collaborating on uh, Jigsaw for Debian. This has been an interest of mine for some time. And um, let, let me tell you what we're going to uh, cover in this talk. We're going to give you a brief overview of what Jigsaw is and why it might be interesting. Um, then we're going to discuss uh, Google Summer of Code and the project that Guillaume has been working on. Sylvester and I are his mentors for Summer of Code. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the new features in JDK 7 and JDK 8, including some notes from the JVM Language Summit, which took place at Oracle last week, and uh, the next steps in our progress towards packaging Jigsaw for Debian. So first of all, what is uh, Jigsaw? Jigsaw is the... Uh, modularization of the JDK. Um, the way that uh, Upstream handles version control is they use Mercurial as a VCS and maintain a number of different uh, forests, as they say, for different parts of the, the project. And there's one of them, which is uh, Mercurial Forest for Jigsaw, which is the name of the modular JDK. Um, the idea is basically to break apart the JDK into multiple inter interdependent parts for a number of reasons, but mainly because the JDK has grown over time and has become quite massive. Um, some of you may know, uh, due to the inner workings of the JDK, that all of the classes, the libraries that you expect when you uh, run a Java program, are in one big JAR file called rt.jar. And what Jigsaw does is it breaks it up into many, many smaller jar files. Um, as a consequence, uh, we'll be replacing the class path with a module path, which is similar in, in purpose. Um, but hopefully, and this is the, one of the other main benefits, is hopefully this will get us out of the jar dependency hell that we've been living in, especially when we find uh, upstreams that have been including library jars in their distributions and, and things like this. So here's a very, very simplified dependency graph for what the JDK looks like in terms of functionality. All, all of the uh, functionality rests on the base module, um, and there are a number of things which depend directly on that, but there are some parts of the JDK which are uh, a little bit uh, farther away in the graph. For example, you'll find that uh, Corba and Kerberos are uh, kind of at peripheral nodes of the graph, and if your program doesn't need those, there's no point in you loading those and parsing those, those jar entries for the startup of your program. Similarly, you'll see that there are a lot of XML-related functionalities or web service functionalities that may not be required for certain programs. And of course, if you're running a server-oriented program, there's no point in pulling in Swing and all of the GUI-related classes. Um, so this actually should make it easier to maintain and easier to, uh, to debug as well as faster. So as I mentioned, there are a number of reasons why the modularized JDK is interesting. One is the size, the overall size, but in, most importantly, the, the size that you actually need in terms of uh, depends for your packages. Um, also, as a consequence, also the runtime memory needs should be much more modest, and uh, startup should be much quicker. As a matter of fact, Upstream has even uh, considered that with a modularized JDK like this, we could imagine Java SE, or Standard Edition, running even on memory-constrained mobile types of devices. And this represents a huge shift from, from the past, where there were, as you may recall, there were, used to be Java Mobile Edition, Standard Edition, and Enterprise Edition. And now the modularized JDK has a chance to reach down into what used to be only mobile type of targets. 
So just like Debian handles version dependencies between packages, Jigsaw handles version dependencies between modules. Our challenge and our opportunity is really to coordinate these two different dependency graphs between the JDK itself and then also user line programs and the, their corresponding Debian packages. Another reason that Jigsaw is interesting has to do with some of the new features that have come along since, uh, for example, uh, OpenJDK 6, which is currently in the archive. And I'm going to talk about the new features in JDK 7 and JDK 8 a little bit later in the presentation. Um, and uh, another really interesting thing for us, hopefully, that we'll get out of modularizing the JDK is a simpler boarding, porting uh, and uh, bootstrapping process so that when we go to new architectures, it should be easier to bring up uh, a, uh, uh, the JDK on those architectures. And maybe we can even simplify, hopefully, some of our build depends for, for Java itself potentially even eliminating some of the need for either ECJ or GCJ. So why is Debian such an interesting fit? It turns out that there are, Debian I think is really unique among the, the primary operating system distributions in having such a strong uh, adherence to modular decomposition, and this is really the problem that the modularized JDK is trying to solve. Uh, although it's not an obvious and quick fit because there are a couple of issues. One of them happens to be with version syntax. Uh, the current version syntax that is permitted by uh, Jigsaw is very liberal and doesn't adhere to Debian policy, and, and we've notified upstream of that. But what's, what's really interesting for us is sometimes in Debian we get interested in um, tackling solutions for us that also will benefit other distributions and even other operating systems. And this is a case where Java, because it's a cross-platform language, needs to work not just for Debian, not just for GNU Linux, but it needs to work on all platforms. And so to get to the point uh, that Jigsaw is today, um, there have been some compromises and uh, harmonization of some of the different approaches to modularity, including OSGI and Maven and, um, for example, other distribution techniques like uh, Red Hat package management and so on. The plan of record, just so you know, is that there, there, it is planned that there will be compatibility between OSGI and Jigsaw. However, it's not exactly clear how that will be implemented. The, the original idea of Jigsaw is that you wouldn't have a lot of annotations in your class as uh, OSGI would, would uh, advocate. But what was really interesting uh, in digging into this, we find that, that RPM, contrary to Deb, doesn't have a tight specification for the version syntax of packages. And I've confirmed this with a number of people. Uh, it's really kind of hard to believe, but the, you know, I have not found, a, for example, a BNR grammar that expresses what an RPM package version could be. And I'd be really glad to be proved wrong. If anyone can point me to that, I'd really appreciate it. Um, the reason that's so important is that when we start talking about dependency resolvers, having the version syntax uh, accurate is really an essential prerequisite. Um, so what we might end up doing is we might actually end up advocating some version syntax changes to upstream uh, and or uh, some adaptations or mappings of Jigsaw versions to Debian package versions. Um, upstream uh, is, is aware of our project and is looking to us for some, some really good feedback. Uh, for a long time, Upstream has made an attempt to uh, package Java modules as Debian packages. Um, at last year at DebConf 10, I spoke about this and why that current Upstream packaging is inadequate. Um, and I think that largely what they're doing is they're using their own tools for creating Debs, but they don't adhere to Debian policy and most specifically do not use the Deb helper set of tools. And that's what we're trying to work on right now. And the timing is really important. Why Jigsaw now in Debian is that, as you may have heard, JDK 7 was just officially released yesterday, and now we're right in the middle of the, of the development cycle for JDK 8, 
and our experiences here could very largely influence upstream for all platforms. So with that, let me turn it over to Guillaume, who will tell you a little bit about his Google Summer of Code project. So as you know now, uh, Jigsaw has been selected as one of the Google Summer of Code in Debian. So I'm working on it, and I'm still working on it now. Uh, the, the Google Summer of Code, we divided the, sum, uh, the Google Summer of Code into five parts, and we're actually at the third part, actually. So the first part of my work was to know how to build Jigsaw. Then we, 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 we packaged some missing dependencies and uh, send, it, send them into the archive. We also wrote some example on how to use Jigsaw. And then we are going to package Jigsaw and test it in Debian. So what we have done so far is building Jigsaw on AMD64. Um, Jigsaw is a big piece of code, so it takes time to build and it takes time to run the test. Uh, we also package two packages uh, that allow us to run the test. So we package GTRNS and GTREG. GTRNS is a library used by GTREG, and GTREG is used to actually run the test inside of, uh, the Jigs of, inside of Jigsaw. Uh, after running the test, we add uh, something like that, so 3,484 uh, tests in Jigsaw, and only 29 of them failed after, the, um, after running the, the full test suite. So I think it's pretty good. It's a pretty good result. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> uh, most of the failure are due to network hard coding hosts, which are machines inside Oracle so that we cannot reach by ourselves. Uh, and we also uh, identified some uh, failure due to GUnit, and uh, the IST uh, hackers helped us a lot to identify this, this test, and now they are aware of this test, and they may work on that. So now we have a repository of Jigsaw in Alioth, which is a Git repository, where you can find Jigsaw and all the script needed to build it. There is also a Debian directory, which is not used yet because it's only a, cop uh, a copy of um, the OpenGDK 7 Debian directory. We applied uh, the patch of Alan Bateman, which is working on another version of the patch we, we applied, which consists of using exploded modules inside the Jigsaw, so we can have uh, modules everywhere on the system and still use it, still use them, sorry. And then we run the test again to see if the patch uh, didn't break anything. Just a word about that. Uh, the exploded modules patch is fairly important because without that, you could only uh, build and run against the system module library and not a yeah. uh, module library on disk. So that's why we felt that applying this patch was really important to, to get some experience with Jigsaw. Yeah. After that, we, was able, we were able to write some example modules. So we are going to see one of the examples just now. Uh, Jigsaw introduced a new file, a new file which describes uh, uh, what is a module and what use a module inside of, the, of a Java project. So this file is called module-info.java and contains 
generally these kind of things. As you can see here, we declare a module with module, then its name, and after uh, its version number. And here is uh, the next two lines are the module required uh, for required to to make the top module work. And then we have the main class of the module to run when we start, when we launch the module. In fact, uh, let me just interject. How many of you in the audience have used or, or packaged Java libraries or applications? OK, so you're probably familiar with the Java helper tools and, uh, that are there to help you package your Java libraries and applications. And you can really sort of imagine what we'll do to Java helper with Jigsaw is we'll expand it to read the module info files, and we'll extract the depends and the versioning out of these files and put that into the control file. So Jigsaw also introduced, due to the fact that now we can uh, create modules, a new f uh, file tree, yeah. file source tree, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, source tree contains now uh, the name of each module that we can see after the module's uh, directory. All modules must have a module-info.java, which, like we have seen before, uh, what modules are needed to run the actual module. And then we can compile a module with, uh, and we can compile actually the two modules in one uh, command line. But we don't need uh, the class path of Java anymore. The class path is actually replaced by the module path. So Java C is still the compiler. Dash D is the directory where the module will be installed, will, will be compiled. Dash modules path is the module path uh, where the uh, where the modules of the GVM are, and then source parse is where the source are, and then the Java files. So with this, we are, we are going to have class files in the, in the modules directory. And now, uh, modules have to be installed on uh, the system, of course. So we have to create a module library. A module library can be is a user module library, actually. It's not the system module library, and you can create it with Gmod. Uh, Gmod creates a module library called mlib, and mlib uh, will contain the modules that we just compiled. A module library depends, is linked actually, to uh, a parent module library uh, that we can specify with dash p, with a dash p option. But here we don't specify the dash p op option, so the module library will be linked um, to the system module library, which contains actually the modules of the GVM. Then we install the modules with Gmod installed, and here we install the two, two modules called org astro and com greetings inside the mlib module library. After that, we can just run the modules and get our nice hello world. This, well, with this, we can define a module library for the system and a module library for the user. So in the, in the future Jigsaw packaging, I guess we will be able to separate GVM modules from 
applications modules installed by Java applications. And here, Tom is going to speak to you about the next step we're going to do during this Google Summer of Code. Thanks. Uh, so um, as Guillaume pointed out, there's a system module library, and there are uh, user libraries as well. So our current thinking right now as to where we'll locate these things, as you probably know, the JVMs live under right now user lib JVM uh, name. And so the thought is perhaps the Jigsaw module library will simply be at that path under modules. And that just as we put uh, jars uh, for Java libraries in user, user shared Java, we'll put uh, shared modules, uh, module libraries in user shared Java modules. So uh, that's subject to some change, but that's our current thinking right at the moment. Um, and uh, one of the other things that I mentioned earlier is we're going to review uh, bootstrapping and how we actually build uh, Jigsaw. So another very important thing that we need to do in the work on packaging for Debian is we want to integrate uh, the fine work uh, and patches of the ICE-T project. And I'll say a little bit more about that on the next slide. Um, also want to benefit from the current OpenJDK packaging that has been done that is uh, already uh, adding a lot of specific uh, uh, features for Debian. And I think we want to consider adding some new uh, features uh, as well. And the one in particular that I'm thinking about is coming from the what's called the MVLM uh, project or the multi-language virtual machine project, which is that project is really geared at supporting different languages on top of the JVM, like JRuby, Scala, Clojure, and so on. And the patch that I'm most interested in is tail C, or the um, tail call optimization patch. For a lot of these dynamic libraries on top of the JVM, they use, uh, often use recursion as an idiom. And with the tail call patch, we should be able to do that without uh, growing the stack as much. And that should result in much better performance and better memory, or less memory use. Um, then, of course, we're going to take the upstream test suite based on JTREG, and we're going to run that again and make sure that we're able to pass it completely and show that we haven't broken anything. This is one of the, the, the reasons that we invested the time up front in making sure that we had the test suite ready to go. And then we're also going to performance test it and see actually how well it does versus the classic uh, JDK. And then we're going to do our best to push uh, our changes upstream, both to Ice-T and then ultimately to uh, Oracle. So I think it's worth saying just a word Ice-T. How many of you are familiar with the Ice-T project? OK, so good. The, there's a few of you that, that uh, are aware of it, but some of you that aren't aware of it. Ice-T is a, a purely community-based uh, collaborative effort, uh, which uh, is really, I think, the best way to describe it is uh, a build harness for OpenJDK. Originally, when uh, Sun liberated Java, um, and I can say we because I used to be at Sun at the time, uh, we shipped uh, Java requiring at build time some binary plugs. Basically, you needed some non-free build depends in order to build OpenJDK. And of course, the, the free software community wouldn't accept that. And so the solution was to develop Ice-T such that OpenJDK could be built from purely free software components. Fortunately, um, that need for uh, closing non-free plugs is no longer there. The, those have all been uh, patched or closed upstream. Um, but there are still some things. Ice-T continues to provide immense value to the community because it adds things like uh, Pulse Audio support, as well as uh, Java plugin and Web Start. Um, uh, much to our disappointment, Oracle has decided not, uh, has not yet decided to liberate uh, Java plugin and Web Start, and so the community is uh, adopting uh, uh, open source tools to solve those needs. And, and certainly for us at Debian, uh, another thing that we benefit from with Ice-T. Uh, are, is support for additional platforms. And that's done through um, what's called the Zero Interpreter and the Shark uh, Just-In-Time Compiler. 
Uh, the zero interpreter is, ca is called that because it, ha it uh, builds on Linux without any assembly code. Um, and it's kind of slow, but it, it, it's a great way of getting onto new platforms. And then Shark is based on that and depends on LL LLVM. Uh, and we have had multiple discussions with uh, Ice-T about collaborating and, and helping, helping the community at large, not just Debian uh, package Jigsaw. And as uh, Guillaume had mentioned, we've already had some really good collaboration with uh, Ice-T on understanding why some of the uh, test failures occurred and, you know, um, and closing those bugs. So now, let me just say a couple of words about uh, what's coming in uh, JDK 7 and JDK 8, because I, I think that it'll be of interest to this group and is very apropos to, to Jigsaw, as you'll see in a second. Um, JDK 7 adds a, f a lot of new features to the JDK, but there's some that I think are worth calling out, most notably uh, extensions to the concurrency models with uh, the fork join framework. So as Java is used for progressively larger uh, enterprise class applications on very large machines, this set of tools will help developers author uh, programs that can be easily de decomposed on multiprocessor systems and then um, coalesce those results. So that's really an extension of um, the concurrency utilities. And then there are a lot of other things, um, a new I.O. library, class loader enhancements, um, new improvements to exceptions. And one in particular that I want to say a little bit more about is this thing called uh, JSR 292 or Invoke Dynamic. Last week at the JVM Language Summit, um, there was an a, lot, a lot of discussion about Invoke Dynamic. And I don't want to try and recap all of that for you, but I want to give you a couple of highlights. Um, the basic idea is in supporting languages built on top of the JVM, uh, there's a need to have effectively the idea of a, like a function pointer. And the idea is you want to connect uh, Java code that's sort of classically in the JDK with bytecode that was created by your, for example, your JRuby compiler, or have your JRuby programs call into the Java libraries without a lot of extra overhead. And it turns out that using this new bytecode that was added to the Java language specification, um, we now can call functions across that sort of native Java or yeah, basic Java and you know, language, derived language uh, boundary uh, very quickly. And that reduces the amount of uh, sort of boilerplate bytecode that's required for that function interface. Um, but I think the most important and most compelling feature of Invoke Dynamic is that it allows the hotspot uh, compiler to do its magic optimizations across that language boundary. So for example, you could write a really complicated and interesting program in JRuby or, for example, in Scala, and if it's wired up using Invoke Dynamic, Hotspot could actually see through from the Java code into your Scala code and do all of it, the cool things that it's doing, escape analysis, inlining, loop unrolling, um, uh, method optimization and substitution and so on. And that, I think, is very interesting. And, and I think that this is something to, to, um, to look for at JDK 7. So what about getting this cool stuff in Debian? Well, it turns out that there is already some packaging of OpenJDK 7 in the experimental repository. And that work was done by uh, Matthias and uh, Damien. And we have some issues right now building on MIPS and MIPSL, but just before this talk, we were talking in the hallway, and we think we might have a potential fix for this, so stay tuned. Uh, we're hoping to, to close that bug. Um, there's work ongoing in porting that to KFreeBSD. And part of what we're thinking is that once we get this building on all the architectures, what we'd like to do is rebuild the archive, or at least the Java parts of the archive, with OpenJDK 7, with the hope that we can convince the release team to make this a goal, release goal for Wheezy. So now JDK 8, it turns out that Jigsaw, or the modularization of the JDK, is one of the primary drivers for JDK 8. So there are a lot of features on the table that have been discussed and a lot of enhancements to the JVM. 
Um, but Jigsaw is one that's absolutely critical for JDK 8. So we're really, we're really ahead of the, the next generation uh, of the upstream release here. Um, one of the really interesting things that I learned last week is that the build system for Java and JDK 8 is going to be completely redone. Right now, if you build uh, Jigsaw, what happens is you go through sort of a classic multi-stage build of classic Java, and then there's a make modules target, and you kind of do all the work to create the modules as a second sort of post-processing step. That's going to be eliminated. The build will start by building the base modules and then building up additional modules in the order of the dependency graph that you saw earlier. So that should make the build a lot more, a lot quicker and a lot more efficient. Um, also, the build is going to be streamlined, so it's uh, hopefully just a lot cleaner as well. Um, I mentioned the multi-language virtual machine uh, patches. Hopefully, we can add uh, the tail call patch. I think that it would be really interesting to do that and also to do some performance analysis on the, uh, the impact of that with and without that patch to see does it uh, bias as much as we think it does. In fact, on that point, I just wanted to say that last week there was an awful lot of interest in performance measurement for, for Java generally, but specifically about uh, Invoke Dynamic and some of these other kinds of patches. For example, in discussing this with Upstream, some of the Oracle people last week, they said, we would love to make the case for adding the tail call patch that already exists to Upstream or to, to the um, JDK 8 builds, but People need to be convinced that this actually is going to lead to a big performance improvement. Um, so I think that if we can measure it and we can demonstrate that, it could very well get integrated uh, by the time the JDK 8 is released. And um, also, just measuring the performance of Invoke Dynamic is quite tricky. So that's, I think, why there's so much interest in the broader community about, about performance testing. And one of the issues that, that did come up is that Java is not the easiest language to do uh, job control with when it comes to, let's say, designing a performance test harness. And so there's a lot of discussion about reviewing or extending Process Builder to do better job control, especially on uh, platforms like Windows that uh, do a particularly poor job of that. So um, with this, let me, let me call your attention to a couple of uh, points. Um, Guillaume's examples are largely taken from the uh, Jigsaw Quick Start Guide, which is on the OpenJDK website. Um, also, there, most all of the presentations from the JVM Language Summit from last week are, are online at this page. And if you're interested in Jigsaw or Java generally in Debian, I'd encourage you to send a mail to the Debian Java uh, mailing list. And with that, that concludes our presentation. <laughs> other, other questions? Has anyone tried to package a, a Java upstream that has all kinds of uh, build dependencies baked into their... <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can see the, the, the veteran Java, Java guys have all uh, struggled with that. Wouter? So, uh one of my upstreams has uh, decided to re-implement the GTK application in Java. Um, and I'm not entirely familiar with uh, what the current state of things is. Uh, they're using Maven and everything, which I know wants to download stuff. Um, is there actually a recommended way of, of doing that in Debian that you can point me to or something? Or point people to? For, for doing... For doing um I didn't quite hear what you yeah, said. Yeah, so um, the thing is, so they're, they're re, they re, are re-implementing some graphical application that now um, wants to, uh, in, in Java, and then now wants to uh, use Maven to, in the build system. As I understand it, Maven wants to download stuff during the build. Yes, yes, available. that's right. Yeah, this is, this is also a very common uh, problem or challenge in dealing with Java upstreams, is they typically like to use Maven. And what Maven is doing is it's doing sort of two things for you. It's, it's acting as your, 
effectively your, your make file, it's your build instructions, but it's also downloading build dependencies at build time. And that's the part that's really problematic for Debian. Um, as many of you may know, Maven 2 has been packaged for Debian, and my understanding is that that feature of downloading things has been disabled so that obviously we don't violate policy on our build daemons. Um, so this is, this is an ongoing challenge. I'm, I think that one approach to doing that is to sort of basically manually tease out the build depends uh, within that build file so that you don't need them. Another, another approach would be to uh, use Maven as it's packaged um, in the archive now. Um, and I'm wondering if I could ask Torsten to maybe say a comment about, um, about Maven, Maven support. Torsten, do you have any uh, additional thoughts to add about how we should handle that? Um, no. Uh, <laughs> I, have, I cannot add something useful here. Um, it would be certainly interesting to uh, build or to get other upstream uh, project to use a, a Jigsaw way to uh, modularize their project or to use it as build depends and stuff, uh, as build depends and as dependencies, runtime dependencies. But I don't know if some other project is already thinking about it. Do you know something about? I think it's yeah. really too early to, to expect yeah, okay, upstreams yeah. to do that. But I, I think that we need a we need a better approach of handling this case where upstreams are using Maven because it is it is a very common problem. Other questions? Okay, well thank you very much for coming. Thank you.